Okay, so here's a quick tutorial, I hope it's a quick tutorial, on using dice rolls in your Twine story to add an element of chance or a element of randomness into your narrative. This dice roll will essentially allow you to create situations where you can offer choice based on the way that the computer or player roll a dice. So we're going to start by building a new story. So we're going to go up, we're in Twine here. We're going to start with a new story. We're going to open this new story. We're going to call this new story a spellcaster, something like that. We're going to create it. We're now inside our new creation and we have to start our story. So let's double click this untitled passage. We're going to rename this untitled passage Awaken or something like that. Hit OK. You can see that it changed the story there and we're going to type our exposition, right? We're going to start our story. So you wake up from a deep sleep unaware of where you are or as it seems who you are there is a man staring at you menacing from across the room. All right. Now we have to offer our first choice in the game. And again, like any of our games that we've been talking about, you could you could create as many choices as you'd like from this space. I'm going to start with just one choice though. And that is freaked out you cast a spell in his direction and we're just gonna make it freaked out as the choice just like that right so that's gonna create a passage called freaked out and then it's you cast a spell in his direction so we're going to, when, when we hit return on that, and if we closed this, you should see there's the freaked out passage that we are going to open up now. And this is where we're going to start playing with our dice rolls. So we're going to open up the freaked out. It's right there. So we need to freaked out. Come on, open up for me. There it is. So we're going to open up the freaked out passage here and we're going to start thinking about how we can use a dice roll. So dice rolls are like all other variables in that we're going to establish them the same way we establish any other variable. We are going to use a parenthesis and then we are going to type set and a colon that sets our variable. And this time we're going to call a variable and we're going to use the dollar sign. And using the dollar sign creates a general variable that will carry on throughout the whole story until it's changed. I don't want to confuse you, but you can use another kind of variable called a temporary variable. A temporary variable works only in the passage that you're writing it in. So in this case, we could set a temporary variable by using the underscore. So we're going to underscore and we're going to call this temporary variable roll. So for our dice roll and we want to set that dice roll to something. So we're going to set it to and here's where we get to play with dice. So in this instance, let's say I want to give my player a 
d20. So a 20-sided dice, typical in like a RPG or in Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. So we're going to set this dice roll to a random number, oops, random number between 1 and 20. When we do that, what we're doing here is you can see this parenthetical starts this macro to set the role. This parenthetical calls this macro, which is random 1 to 20. So we need to close that second macro there and then close the whole macro that began with set. So at this point, we have a macro that is set a temporary variable called roll to a random number between 1 and 20. And then I'm just going to add a slash there because it helps to manage line spacing. You don't have to do that, but it does manage line spacing in Twine. So we've rolled the, the number at this point, but now that roll is doing nothing. All it's done is the computer has generated a random number between 1 and 20. Now we're going to use that random number to offer a set of different choices to our players. So we're going to use an if then statement. So we're going to put a parenthetical again. We're starting a new macro. We're going to type in if. So, and anytime you're using a statement, in this case, if, we're going to follow that with a colon, if colon. Now we're going to call that temporary variable role. So if the role is less than 10, so we'll give our players a 50-50 shot here. So if it's less than 10, then what are we going to do? Well, if it's less than 10, let's say, and notice that what we did there is we closed that if statement and now in twine especially in harlow which is the language that we're using here the then in an if then statement is implied by the use of a bracket so we're going to put a single bracket there so if the role is less than 10 then it's going to do something so we're going to say the magic sparkles in your hand and then it dies dang it right. you really oops i can't spell you you really need to practice your casting skills. So in this instance, what we're telling the computer to do is we're telling it to, if the players roll, so when the computer runs this macro up here, if it comes to a roll that is less than 10, then the computer is going to print for your player to see the magic sparkles in your hand and then it dies. Dang it, you really need to practice your casting skills. Now, if, you're, if you want your player to see something else, we're going to use the else function. So else, in other words, if it's 10 or more in this instance, because We've already defined a less than 10. So if it's 10 or more, that's the else statement. Then the player is going to see instead, so we're using the bracket again for the then, they're going to see instead you successfully cast a spell of fear and the man now 
towers in the corner, right? Like that. So we're gonna see a different scenario if we roll better than a 10 in this instance. And then we're gonna drop down and we'll put a continue the story and that continue the story is going to go to another new passage that we'll just call the man. So we're gonna click on that. So that should create another passage called the man. So when we close these up, we should see there's the man, there's the passage that we just rolled or we just started with. So we've got all of this stuff in here. And now we're going to go back up to our awaken and let's see how this works. So we're going to test it from here. We're testing it from the first spot here, awaken. So we're test. All right. You wake up from a deep sleep, unaware of where you are, or as it seems, who you are. There's a man staring at you menacingly from across the room. Freaked out, you cast a spell in his direction. So we're going to freaked out. And in this case, the magic sparkles in your hands and then it dies. Dang it, you really need to practice your casting skills. And if we look down at the debugging window down here, you can see that our role is, has been set to the number three. So we were, when we rolled that die, it rolled a three. Our player is not going to know that. All they're going to see is this fail state, right? That they have failed. If we re, if we, if we reload this page, you can see you wake from a deep sleep. Let's say freaked out. You cast a spell in his direction. When we hit the freaked out button, ah, you successfully cast a spell of fear, and the man now cowers in the corner. And you can see if we go down to the debug window down here in the testing window, that in that roll, the, the, the variable that we set at the beginning of this um, passage is now set to 19. So our player essentially rolled a 19 and has successfully cast this spell, meaning that we could in the game, now that we're back in the game, what we could do there is allow for something different to happen. So what if instead of continue to the man, let's get rid of that and let's say that if we fail, we'll go, so we're adding to the fail state here. So we're inside the then statement for the fail state. So we'll say the man just, and we're going to add a new passage in the fail state. So we're going to put a double bracket, just double square bracket, and we're going to put smiles. And then because this, we're trying to create a new passage, we need to close smiles with a double bracket. So that created a new passage smiles inside this fail passage, the magic sparkles. So that's why we have those three brackets there. Now we'll go else you successfully cast this and now, and we'll let's wrap cowers in the corner into a set of brackets. So it creates a passage calls called cowers in the corner. So, two brackets there, two brackets at the end of corner to give us that new passage. And if we close this, we should see a new passage called smiles and a new passage calls called cowers in the corner. So there's smiles and there's cowers in the corner. So if our player rolls less than 10, then it's going, the only place our, our, our player is gonna be able to go is to the man just smiles. If the player succeeds on that d20 roll and rolls better than a 10, then you've successfully cast 
a spell of fear and the man now and it's going to take us to another passage called cowers in the corner so let's see if this works we're going to come up to awaken we are going to test it from the awakened state so let's test from here you wake up from a deep sleep unaware of where you are or it seems you would about you can read that freaked out so we're click on freaked out the magic sparkle sparkles in your hand and then it dies dang it you really need to practice your skills the man just smiles and there's that smiles and if we go down to our debug window you can see that our roll was a five there and now the only option we have is to go back or to go to smiles because we failed on our roll if we run this again let's see if we can succeed nope that was a two that we just rolled so we're still forced into that smiles if we run it again there's a nine we almost succeeded but nope we're still being pushed into smiles and note that i'm not going using this back button here if i use that back button it won't reset this roll that's why i'm when i'm testing in the game that's why i'm using the refresh button in the browser so i'm reloading the page so that it starts the game over from scratch all right so we're going to freak out we rolled a one we're going to freak out hey there we go we got a 13 and now you can see that we're successful and it's going to take us to cowers into the corner so that's i mean this is a, a down and dirty way of showing you how to do this the only other option that I think might be interesting is if you wanted your player to see what they were rolling, it's a really simple addition to this little bit of, of code here. You can just simply add a line kind of anywhere in this. Um, so let's put it just here between the if statement and the set macro. And you can just type in you something like simply you rolled and then we're going to call that variable. So we're going to ask the computer to tell us what that variable is. So we just take the variable name and we pop it down in here. So you rolled and it should print what we rolled there. So if you want your player to know that there's dice being rolled and this isn't just some random hand of God, you, you're gonna put in the, you, you can put in this kind of HUD, this, this uh, a way of seeing the dice roll. So we're gonna close this. We're gonna go back to awaken. We're gonna test from here. So we wake up, we're freaked out. And now this time you can see you rolled an 11. If we go down to the debug, you can see that the number that was set for roll is in fact an 11 and now we successfully cast our spell of fear and the man cowers in the corner so in doing this what we're doing is we're essentially creating two passages based and and giving a player a choice of only one of those passages based on the number that is rolled if you want to change this to a d6 you just do one and six like that now the player has even less chances if you wanted to do a four-sided die it's there so whatever random number if you want to run a hundred-sided die it's there and doing that would give your player essentially a 90 percent chance of success <clears throat> doing this you're giving your player a 50% chance with a 20-sided die. It's a 50-50 shot. Actually, it's a little bit more than a 50-50 shot because we, to make it a 50-50, you would do less than or equal to like that. Now it's 1 to 10 is a fail and 11 to 20 is a fail. So that would be a true 50-50. So if we play out at that let's go back to awaken we'll test from here we're gonna freak out we rolled a six so we failed and so now it's a little bit harder 
to succeed. There's a 10. And you can see that the 10 is still a fail now because it's an equal to or less than. That was fortuitous that we rolled a 10. So you can see how that works. So it is that equal to 10, making it a true 50-50. So that's how you're going to set a dice roll. It'll work just as well in this instance. So if we change the temporary variable to a universal variable using the dollar sign, it will also work. The only difference here is that the roll is now going to be saved in the computer's memory. So here, let me show you what I mean by that. So we've made, in this instance, rather than a temporary variable, so the underscore creates a variable only for this passage, and then the computer forgets it. If we use the dollar sign, it's creating a universal variable that goes into the computer's memory, and the computer will hold that value. So whenever the value is rolled in that set roll, this area here, that value is going to be placed into memory and it's gonna be held. So that if we were to then, let's say go to our smiles, you can see that if I keep you rolled there and I do roll, I call the variable, you'll see that it'll jump to smiles. And what that might do is what if I had an if statement, if, and we're using the universal variable, roll, because it's still set, is less than 10 we're going to see this passage. And we haven't re-rolled a die. And then we'll do else. And we'll say this other passage. And so without re-rolling the die, it's just going to carry over whatever we bring from this first time we roll the die. So here, I'll show you. We're going to test from here. We're going to be freaked out. And you can see we rolled a one, and the man just smiles. So now when we go to smiles, roll should still be set to one. And you can see that it is still set to one. If we get higher than, Let's see if we can get a better roll. There's a 14, good. We're going to cower in the corner. We're gonna take that 14 with us. So we should only be offered the other passage that we set up. And you can say this other, you can see here, it's going to this other passage. Because we took that 14 with us, if the roll is less than 10, we're gonna see this passage. If it was more, in this case it was a 14, it's this other. Now, I can break that by setting our variables back to temporary variables. So if we put the underscore back into this variable, and the underscore back into this variable, and the underscore back into this variable, and then we're gonna close that, and then we're going to go back in here, and we're going to set an underscore there. And we're going to set this variable to temporary as well. This is going to break it because what we're doing is once we leave freaked out, the computer should forget what our role is. It should just dump that value out of its memory and forget. So now we won't see anything and it will probably yell at us. So we're going to close this, we're going back to awaken, we're going to test from here, we're going to be freaked out, 
you can see that the number is 11 on the second passage. And now if we go to cowers in the corner, it should forget that value of 11 and it should break. And it does break, see? So we have broken it by using a temporary variable. And to fix that, what we would have to do is either use a general variable that follows the player through, or in this instance, once we got to this space, what we want to do is simply roll the die again. Copy. We're going to copy our dice roll here. And if we plunk that into this passage, now we're setting the dice roll again. So we're setting a new temporary variable for this passage. So a new dice roll will happen. The good thing about a temporary dice roll is it allows for another set of random chances. Rather than carrying that same dice roll through the game, we're going to, we're going to change it by making the computer perform the roll again. So we add that to there. We would add the same thing to this one, like that. And now when we go to play the game again, we're going to wake up. Oops, let's actually do it. Let's close that here. Test. So we're freaked out. You can see we rolled a four. So it's going to take us to smiles. When we click on smiles, because we added that roll macro again, it's going to roll the dice again and it's going to give us a new value. So smiles and you can see it went from four to a one. If we are successful, let's see, nope, that's a four again. Let's see if we can roll something a little higher. There's an 11. Okay, so now he's going to cower in the corner. And now when we go to the cowers in the corner, it's going to affect another dice roll, changing that 11 to something else, and then giving us either one passage or the other passage. So cowers in the corner, and it's the other because we rolled greater than 10. And you can see that the value of the dice roll changed again. I hope that last bit didn't confuse anybody. If you have questions about these things, you know where I am and you can contact me.